Today, we're getting a behind-the-scenes tour of Arlanda Airport. We'll take you into the new VIP terminal, we'll do some plane spotting, we'll find out what that MD-80 parked off the taxiway amid the trees is doing there, we'll see the progress on the huge new construction of a consolidated security area for Terminal 5 and more. Join us. Welcome to a very gray and drizzly and cold morning at Stockholm Arlanda Airport, an airport I come to all the time. Uh, but today we have a very special experience here. We're getting taken around by Daniel and John. And they know all about how things work behind the scenes at Arlanda Airport. And they're giving me a little glimpse today over the course of a few hours of uh, some of that action. So we've come here to start off uh, in front of this TUI 787-9, which is getting ready to push back for a positioning flight to Gothenburg. After that, we're going to go around and see a lot more about what's going on here, some of the new developments, new construction, things coming, uh, VIP terminal. We're going to do some plane spotting as well. So come along and uh, let's see what we see. It should be a cool day. Can we go and look under it at the same time? Absolutely. Okay. okay. So here you have the perfect and here you have the scoop on the right hand side, eh? yeah. which then will connect to the main wheel and then just lift it up. She's doing the pre-departure check now okay. to make sure that there's no scratches on the plane or no damages that occurred while it's been the turnaround process. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize that a ground person would do that. Yeah. It's very important to make sure that the aircraft is intact, yeah. to make sure there's no any, any damages that occurred. It's all these kind of different layers to make sure that the aircraft is ready to fly and there's no problem. Strobe light now. Yeah. And that's the sign to show that they're ready on the inside. The APU is now running. So soon, they will talk to the cockpit. Not via the telephone, but through the radio headset, which is attached to the green cable there. And then they will have the sign when they detach the, the cables now, to make sure they have power in their truck. Now since the APU is up and running, they can disconnect the ground power unit. Okay. Witness the turnaround. Yeah, beautiful. And also not the turnaround, but the end of the turnaround, which meant pushback for departures for the 787 that's going for a positioning flight down to Gothenburg Airport, and then hopefully leaving Sweden to warmer places. It looked like Phuket. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's what, that's what Flight Radar 24 told me. Oh, nice. Me anyway. <laughs> of course, Flight Radar 24. You can always trust those guys. So we're gonna try and catch the takeoff now as well. So let's head in back to the car and see if we can catch the takeoff. All right. It's always fun to race a plane to the runway. Yeah, when take off this would be nice for sure. Yeah. I think it was 
one of the largest buildings in the world that they moved back in the 80s or 90s. But they basically moved the whole hangar area from one part from Arlanda to the other side. And as you see on the print, it was made for the Fokker F28. So right now we're gonna cross, not cross, but we're gonna drive around the runway. Zero one left. So we're now at the southernmost point of the airport. So we got Ryanair about to take off. Two we just behind him. Out of the car, you have to Yeah. Oh, might be a little wet in the ground if you have the wrong shoes like I do today. So for wildlife we usually have uh, mostly it's birds that we need to scare off so they don't get caught in the engines. Right. But we also get occasionally rabbits. That's the most common thing. We also get some foxes. And then uh, I've got the name Grävling. Uh, badger. Badgers, oh. yeah. Some badgers digging underneath. Oh, okay. So that's usually one that we try to take off. But the main the main job of the wildlife control here is usually to prevent animals from coming in here and then to scare them off of course so right now they're sitting across the runway from there to making sure that maybe they had some bird spotting or things like that yeah so yeah he's monitoring right now and see if maybe had heard some spotting from a pilot or something like that or from ATC right so here is the northern end at least with the old ILS and we got some really nice Terminal in the background, very close to the taxiway here, and hopefully there will be some kind of activity. But it doesn't seem like that, of course not. <laughs> but we have some really nice spots here. If they go through Papa Alpha, mm. the short taxiway here, then we're very close to the aircraft.
How cool to be able to spot the aircraft from basically the taxiway. I've never really been spotting at Orlando. There aren't that many amazing spots for it, but uh, if I could do this more often, airside, taxiway side spotting, I would certainly do it. We'll go to the graveyards, as we called it back in the days, but we'll, let's go to where we store some of the old aircraft that have been parked here at Stockholm Island Airport. So let's see if we can take this. Yeah, we'll take this way first. You can't hear him, but John just said he doesn't like the sound of the A330's engines. You don't like it? No. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm one of the few who don't like it. I prefer the new one, the A350. Ah. I can understand preferring the 350, but actively not liking the no. 330s. I don't know. He's a very spoiled, you know, it travels around the world. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is it about the sound on those? Is that yeah, <laughs> it's hard to explain. The the kind of growl on the 350 growl, ones is yeah, better. Yeah. Like that on, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna expose you. Yeah. <laughs> Hold you accountable to here. <laughs> now we're at one of our five training sites. So we have one of our old fuselages over there, and a Sweden MD82. It looks like. We have also some mock-ups of different aircraft, which they usually set on fire when they do the training. So here we have one of those examples. Hmm. So here they can simulate the fires as they run up and put it out. You can drive around it and see if we see it for better. Yeah. So they can simulate different engine types, of course, as well with over over the wing engines, as you see if we go around. And there's an underneath wing as well. Oh yeah. Here we can drive up to this old beauty and see. <laughs> the nice painting on the nose coat. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to have a look around it? Or yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Some of you in previous videos have pointed out that uh, you've spotted an MD-80 parked here uh, as we've taxied by, and at the time I didn't know what it was. Now, now we know. It's this old Air Sweden MD-80, and uh, they use it for practice uh, different scenarios crisis response. Would you say it's right to say crisis response? Yeah, scenarios? crisis response. Yeah. Uh, so, really cool. It's not in the best shape. I mean, it's actually in good shape, actually. It just looks very, very dirty. But uh, cool to see this out here in the middle of the woods. So as you see, it's hooked up to the power outlet as well. Wow, yeah. Off staircase, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's also why we have the aircraft quite remote as well. So it's not easy to see when they do the trials as well and exercises. Yeah. Good, yeah, she's a beauty. Yeah. Across from here we will have Patria helicopters, where they usually have some... Usually the Swedish police uses that, and it seems like an active strobe there as well for a helicopter. So maybe we'll catch it when we drive around. So here we have an active Swedish police helicopter. Mm. So we need to wait for them to actually taxi out. We have some quite old, unique aircraft. We have a stripped down 340 all the way down. There's not a lot, a lot of spare parts anymore in that aircraft. Wow. You see, they even stripped. 
the windows of it. So it's this one is not going anywhere for quite some time. Yeah. We have our own Svedavia MD80 actually, which we usually lend to our ground handlers when they do training for the icing, but also aircraft exterior cleaning that we perform here at the airport. Mm. So it's very nicely branded with the old Svedaga logo, but it's a beautiful aircraft with a beautiful livery. And it looks quite clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have an old British lady, the BEA ATP flew for next yet until they went bankrupt. Amazing. A very special aircraft. And here you even see some holes in the front of the aircraft here. Yeah. Some one maybe decided they want to tear the aircraft down, but then said no. Wow. But But here we have the most beautiful aircraft there is at Stockholm Arlanda Airport, the Le Caravelle from SES. Mm. Was then sold to the Swedish Air Force and then it was given back to a group of enthusiasts called the Le Caravelle Club that you should definitely check out. And it's not no. Oh, nice with the old one and the new one. Yeah. And one of the interesting things about this aircraft is actually SES was the first customer in Europe to use this aircraft, even before Air France had it. Uh, huh. And this is how an extremely stripped down 787 looks like, without any engines, the big, beautiful engines. Oh, yeah. Doesn't take a lot of imagination where this aircraft is going next. <laughs> yeah, that's, there's a clue. <laughs> Have you ever spotted the DC-8 parked at Arlanda and wondered what it was? It turns out no one seems to know for sure how it got there. Some say it was an African king who was overthrown while on an official visit to Sweden. And the aircraft has stayed parked here ever since. Do you know anything more about this story? It's amazing how there isn't really definitive information. Are there no. various versions? Yeah. Explanations of as to why this is here or, yeah. or what's inside or it's all surrounded in kind of mythology now. Huh? Yeah. How long has it been here, do you know? I don't know, it may be even... 15 or 20 years maybe. Okay. It's been for quite some time. This is the brand new VIP terminal, and I'm told no one has filmed in here yet. You can go in here. You can actually book these rooms if you're traveling on a commercial flight. So this is one of the VIP rooms. We have eight rooms. They all look the same. So they can sit here for a cup of coffee. They have their own bathroom, and they like to use the shower and stuff in here. And they have coffee and Thanks. whatever. I'll put the link in the description in case you want to find out more. The first Scandinavian thing. That's beautiful. You think so? Yeah. And um, how often are they booked? These? How oh, daily. 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 Yeah, daily. And you said today you're full. We're Every, full, yeah. yeah. Everything's booked. Yes, after lunch we're totally full in here. Wow, amazing. Can we come in, Buff? <laughs> so this hey. is the king and queen's room. So, as you can see, it looks the same as the other room. The only thing is that we have a picture of the king and queen there, so that's, that's nice. why. Yeah. And it's a bit bigger. It's a bit bigger. Yeah. The royal suite is reserved for the king and queen of Sweden when they're flying, but if they're not using it, you can actually book it too, for the same price as the others. This is the door we use for mainly for VIPs, for the king and the queen. 
Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson och whatever they use in the store. Kan flightradar bara få komma in snabbt och göra en filmning här inne? Kom, you're welcome. So this room is for when we have bigger groups. And I think we can have like 40 people up here so they can sit up here and wait. Ah. Hey. If you ever planning to get married, please don't. Then you can we can have we can arrange for people to get married in here. Really? Then we have like a priest and everything coming in here. Which is nice. Yeah. We had that back in days we had weddings in the yeah. tower as well. Yeah, I know. Really? We had a wedding last week actually. Nice. Yeah, it's super cute. There's a lot of construction going on in Arlanda's Terminal 5, which you'll probably have noticed if you passed through here recently. Some of it is extending the airside floor space, while the biggest project is a new main entrance and much bigger, more efficient, consolidated security area. We'll head over there in a bit. So the new marketplace that we're building will be very high sustainability standards when it's completed. The main beams are timber, which is going to be visible as well, which also both in terms of having a nice aesthetic look to it, also has a very low sustainable carbon print once we construct it, which is very important for us to, as an airport to show that all aspects that of running an airport is important for us. It's not only to have the sustainable air fuels and going into the next step of electrification, but also constructions at the airport is important for us. So does it get old being around all this? No. It seems like it must be fun all yeah. the time. It's like like a pinch in the arm when you have a boring day you know that uh, you're always at the airport just to look out from the window you always see the aircraft so for us who have the passion of being in aviation it's always a treat to be in this kind of environment because in some way you always feel like home because it's something about the smell it's something about the air it's something special to be at and around the airport so it's a treat every day to be here yeah and have the possibility to be around the there's nothing like an airport for sure all right, we're about to go up in the tower. This beautiful yeah, thing is yeah, looming above us. Uh, see what it's like from almost the top floor of this one. Extra security. I have not even I'm allowed to be no. here. <laughs> Unfortunately, we couldn't get access to the main level of the control tower this time, but we did at least get to go to the floor below that where they handle gate and stand allocations, including at Bromma Airport. Hey. Hey. Okay, everything was right there. So this is the gate and stand location at Stockholm Island Airport, which also handles Brom Airport. So right now we're facing south. Over there by the clouds, we have Stockholm, the inner city, 45 minutes away from here. Then we have the ramp Delta and Echo, where we were and saw the Tui turn around. On the opposite side, we have the freight area, ramp uh, Romeo. Further to the right, we have Terminal 2, Terminal 3, and then also the southern end of runway 01 left. Because here we have the new gate where we're going into. That might be a nice shot to have it from here now, because we're going into that one later. Yeah. This is Terminal 5, as we're seeing right now. We have the new pier from Pier F, or not the new pier, but we inaugurated in 2001, the same time as we built the new tower and our third runway here at the airport. And we're also now seeing the construction of the new, what we call the gate, where we have the new security control and, and a bit bigger market area as well for retail food and beverages, which will open for the upcoming summer here at Stockholm Island Airport. So we're gonna have the same amount of shaking counters, but we're gonna have an additional bigger security control. Okay, so this is this new section is all for the new... Yes, the new security. centralized security control. What we're seeing behind us here is the catering area. We also have recycling area, which is really important because 17,000 people have Stockholm Island as a workplace. So it's the size of a smaller Swedish city and everything needs to work as well as garbage recycling is very important for us as well. We also have the areas further down where the yellow vehicles are. That's where we have all the kinds of snow removal vehicles, buses and extra Svedavia vehicles. And then also, of course, the fuel station since we need fuel at the airport. 
So how about another gold Flight Radar 24 subscription giveaway? This time it'll require a little more legwork. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Then let us know in the comments which aircraft you spotted in the video and tell us where you think they were going. At least one aircraft and you'll be entered into a random drawing. But the first person to post a comment naming 10 aircraft and their destinations correctly will also win one. So unlike in previous drawings, you can win this by being quick and a big ab geek, not just by chance. Got it? I'll also put the rules in the description. This is the long way down. Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried running it? Uh, there's actually a competition when yeah. you do it. Oh, really? Here for the inter uh, for the employees here, they usually have the competition. Cool. I think the record is two minutes and twelve seconds all the way from the bottom to the top. Time to wrap up the day by checking out the construction at Terminal Five. They say the new security area will more than double the current throughput. It's bigger, but it will also get the new machines that allow you to leave everything in your bag, speeding up the whole process. Beyond that is a number of new restaurants and shops. So hopefully from this summer, it'll mean a much more efficient and pleasant process getting through the terminal at peak times. We're getting a look now at the centralized security area, which is currently under construction and uh, due to be open this summer, I believe. Beware sure. of the cables. Uh, yeah. All of the security checks in Terminal 5 and Terminal 4 are going to be condensed into this one, and uh, looks like quite an impressive, huge space. On this side, it's the old building that was built in 1976, it opened in 1976. Uh, the old, in this corner was the old entrance, the big revolving doors, uh, here, SAS used to have the ticket desk. On this side, it's the, the, the building they call the central building, with SAS usually resides with, it, with its uh, uh, partners. They're going to go into the building, check in, turn around, and they're going to see this. It's a big building. Uh, it's 300 meters long. And the sub ceiling is um, a see-through uh, uh, raster, or, or what do you call it? Uh, it has, a, 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 it left through 80%. And, and by having that um, high amount of, of see-through, we can put lighting, sprinklers, everything, speakers above the sub-ceiling. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you, if you look at airports sub-ceilings, they're littered with stuff in them. The first two lanes will be installed. They're actually installing them uh, as we speak, so to say. You see all these boxes? That's part of the, of the uh, security lanes. Thanks for joining on this one, and let us know, would you like to see more of this kind of thing, or would you rather stick to videos where we actually fly? I'm curious to know. In Stockholm for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.